and I read all of the books. And the books, which are set actually in the 30s, which is when our version is set, and um, during the Great Depression, darker, more profound backdrop, and she just leapt off the page at me. She is so enigmatic and batty and funny and vain and rude and all of these things that were like so delightful to play. And he presented me the idea of it and um, he was so excited about it and he really made sure I was aware, you know, this was Disney's most prized possession in many ways and as it rightly should be. And, um, and so he just said, I really want to do it and I only want to do it with you and if you don't want to do it, then I may just find something else. Because he said, I see you. And I was like, oh my God, like it was just so <laughs> exciting and flattering and thrilling and scary and everything that I sort of look for in taking on something new because I knew it was going to be such a stretch and and I want to be a bit scared taking something on at this point. Rob is the perfect person um, because he understands human beings on a sort of molecular level. He understands people's hearts. He is an innately wonderful, uncynical, hopeful man. And he is so sophisticated and so elegant that I knew this was not gonna be a sort of CGI'd, modernized, aesthetically cool version of Mary Poppins. This was gonna be something that was um, a classic, you know. And he knows how to do that. He knows how to do big storytelling in a beautiful way. This was a completely, you know, practically done, um, big Hollywood movie, such a throwback to those old movies where you don't have a lot of CGI. I think we barely had any green screen other than the animation sequence. Um, and people are on wires. We are floating around on wires and um, everything from the parrot umbrella that speaks was an animatronic actual umbrella that is not CGI'd, that is an actual parrot that is speaking that someone made with their hands. Every set was so beautifully crafted and real and transporting. Um, and I think it just grounded everybody, you know. We all discovered the magic in it. There's a whole sequence with Meryl Streep's character who plays my cousin Topsy where we're in an upside down room and they actually created an upside down room. I mean, it was just incredible. That special effects team, what they were able to do production design wise and these sets that actually worked, that actually moved and props that actually were filmed and then that footage is in the movie. It just, it, you can touch it and you can feel it when you watch the movie because you're not left feeling numb by something that's sort of, you know is computer generated. So you can feel it. Someone else just said to me that Mary Poppins when it first came out was the great unifier of the time. And I think in many ways, that's probably what we need right now. We are in a fragile time. It's a disconcerting time. Um, and I think this is a film that's completely uncynical. And as my husband calls it, it's like a joy bomb. It's just so <laughs> moving, you know, and I don't think there's anything else like it out there. Um, and I think people don't even realize how much they might need an experience like this. There's a line in the trailer where um, Michael Banks says to me, well what, well, what brings you here? And she says, well, the same thing that brought me the first time. I've come to look after the Banks children. And he says, and then the kids say us. And she goes, oh, yes, you too. And it's really about Michael. So it's that, that's really the key. Yes, she's come to give some solace and some comfort and some magic to these children's lives who have had to really become like adults in the absence of their mother and their mother passing. And their father is falling apart as much as Cherry Tree Lane is. And, but really it's about him. I think that's why she comes back. There's a big um, music hall number with Lynn and I called The Cover Is Not The Book. 
And that was probably the most dancing I had to do. I do a little bit in the big lamplighter dance sequence as well, but um, that was day one of rehearsals, was we started to dance. And we ran that thing for eight weeks, over and over and over again till, and then Rob just said, you need it in your body. It's gotta be in your body so that on the day when the cameras are rolling and there's all that crew and you're in the costume, like you don't have to think about it, that you feel safe. And that's a dancer's mentality. Like that's where Rob comes from. He understands that when creating something as such a spectacle as this is, you need rehearsals. You need to make sure that um, everything feels good and detailed to people. But I think her greatest quality is that she, does, she has this ability to recognize what people need in a moment and she can give it to them. Um, and she recognizes in this scene that the children are really hurting and they really miss their mom. And so it's this, it's this very hopeful, actually, and tender scene and song to comfort them, really. So I love doing that. And I absolutely adored being a part of the massive lamplighter, triple little light, fantastic, huge dance number with like 50 dancers and guys on bikes and they had parkour guys. I mean, it was just extraordinary. It got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And that was when I was like, I am so lucky. I cannot believe how lucky I am that I get to do this. Lin-Manuel Miranda plays Jack, who's a lamplighter. They called them Learys at the time. Um, and they literally would light all of the, the oil gas lamps around London. Um, and he's a working class guy. Um, and Lin was perfect for it because we needed a character who not that he is magical in the way that Dick Van Dyke's character maybe was not magical, but he is so in cahoots with Mary and understands what she's about and, um, and can't wait to go on these adventures with her. So we needed somebody who has that sort of natural, hopeful and effervescent quality and Lynn just has it, you know, in spades. He's just so fab. Meryl plays uh, my cousin, Cousin Topsy, who runs a small fix-it and repair shop. And she's of uh, vaguely of Eastern European descent. She's really crazy, um, very colorful, eccentric character. Um, we have a somewhat, somewhat contentious relationship, which was really fun to play. And we drive each other crazy. And it's, it's, it's one big number that she has. Um, and we bring something to her shop to have it mended. Um, and her whole world um, is turned upside down. So she, she gains the nickname Topsy Turvy from Jack. If you're going to take on something as special and unique as Mary Poppins um, and create the next chapter, you do need somebody as unique and meticulous as Rob Marshall and the whole team that he built around him. Um, people who cared so deeply about the project that every single detail was thought out and then, you know, questioned and, and you crunch the numbers on it and you think about it and is this right? And the time he took, the length of time he took preparing and writing and creating this film was so important. It was so cared for, it was so tender how people were with this project, you know, everybody working on it, Mark Shaman, Scott Whitman, and the number of songs they wrote that weren't in the movie or weren't the chosen songs. I mean, what they poured into the music, it was really spellbinding watching everybody care so deeply about a project, you know. And I think, you know, the idea for me of Mary Poppins is really that she, she arrives in this quite severe blue peacoat but it's like the lining and what's on the lining and it's like this dotty mad lining that she has and that's her, that's really who she is. Um, and so I think you need someone who's got that kind of courage to create that in the costumes. And also Mary Poppins is so vain and so stylish and so Sandy knew how to, um, you know, make me f feel that, the extension of what, how I wanted to play her, you know. She's not a fuddy-duddy in any way. She loves clothes, she loves shoes, and she loves how people react to her. It was one of the experiences that will probably 
you know, define a period in my life, like forever. I mean, it was just, it's just a, it's an unparalleled thing, you know, to play someone like her and work with the people that I did and for it to have been done in the way that it was, um, it, it will always hold a completely special, unique, and sort of quite treasured place in my life, really. Yeah, it was amazing.